All right. Father, we do bless you this morning. I think it's funny. I can do whatever I like. I never do whatever I like. Uh, <laughs> Father, we thank you that we'll do what, what you desire to do this morning in I Jesus' name. That. That's a deal. Amen. <clears throat> now you just have to bear with me. I was up most of the night. Mm-hmm. And uh, we believe in God will show up this morning. Amen. Let me find my markers now. Ah, there we go. Two scriptures to start with. We'll look at four or five. But uh, one of them is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 18. I don't need a thing, do I? Can you hear me? Do I need that? No, I'm fine. Uh, Brenda, what about you? All right. Uh, But anyway, in Galatians 5, verse 18, it says, And if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. And I saw this scripture jump off the page uh, one morning when I was uh, getting dressed. And if you know how big my print is, it will jump off the page, okay? And it's a blessing to me to have this Jerry Farwell New Testament. (laughs) Psalms and Proverbs from the 80s. I tell you what, I used to think it was just for old people, but I grew. (laughs) And, uh, See, now I read that verse. Did you catch what it said? It says, if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. And yet we're constantly telling people they're not under the law. We're constantly uh, hearing a message that tells you it's just all grace. You know you're, you're, you're under grace. Now you're not under the law. But when I saw that that morning, it jumped off that page. I saw that you're, that you're only not under the law oh, I love it. when you're led of the Spirit. Oh. Uh. And if I, and if I'm, and and it's a Thank condition, you, isn't there? Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 you know, and that's a very important uh, difference between, you know, what we normally say and what we normally think and what it actually says. It says if you're led of the Spirit, then you're not under the law. But the opposite would be that if I'm not led of the Spirit, then I put myself right back under the law because the law is there to keep me from getting in uh, deep trouble to keep me from running off the highway at 150 miles an hour. So they put that sign up and says 70. Okay? But now if I be led by the Spirit, then the law is not necessary to keep me in check because I'm being led by God. Amen? Amen? Is that yes. okay? Yes. So, so, for, so for example, that uh, some people still need some do's and don'ts. <laughs> Because they're not being led by the Spirit. And the other scripture is in John 3, and I'll read it to you and we'll come back. And uh, in John 3, yeah, John 3 and 5, And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom Mm -hmm. of God. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus uh, about the time he said that you must be what? Born again. again. And uh, so in verse 3, Jesus said, Verily, verily, which just means amen. That's all it means. I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay? So if you're born again, you can what? You can see, can't you? It's all right, isn't it? And if you're born again, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, So that says that if you're saved, that you've been born of the spirit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And people get hung up on that water part and get on water baptism and stuff, but it really means when you came out of your mother's womb, her water broke. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. You were born once physically, Mm -hmm. and the second time you were born again of the what? And I didn't say not to get water baptized, but I'm telling you that that's what it is. That you come out of the womb once and you come out of the Spirit the second time. That's good. Okay? So you have the potential that you, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh. We can tell we were born of the flesh because I'm standing here. You know, and it's got things growing out of it that used to not grow out of it. It's not participating (laughs) like you'd want it to 
Amen. Amen. It's the flesh. It doesn't always do what you want it to do, but That's you kind right. of have it. It's necessary because mm -hmm. you're on this earth. Mm -hmm. But then you also are born of the Spirit. Spirit. So that would take us back over to Galatians 5.18 and say that if I'm led of the Spirit, then I'm not under the law. And that blessed me because, you know, I, I don't want anybody to be under the law. But at the same time, if they're not led by the Spirit, if they're not controlled by the Spirit, Amen. if they're not uh, being uh, directed by the Spirit, then they fall back under a list of do's and don'ts. Right. And the problem with that is, uh, we'll look at Romans 8, for example. Let's look at Romans 8 and chapter 1, and I'll read it to you. You know, we usually don't go through a lot of scriptures, but we're going to look this morning because God's just really wanting me to get across to us, uh, to myself, because I deal with people that deal with uh, this continually as a minister. There is, therefore, now no condemnation, amen, amen. amen. to those which are in Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, who... Well, oh, we can stop right there and the rest of the verse never exists. We uh -oh. just stop and say there's no <laughs> condemnation here in Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah. But then it says there's no condemnation to those that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Isn't that the truth? That's the same thing we read a while ago. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that condemnation is not from God, right. but condemnation is the natural result of me trying to walk with God in the flesh. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. As soon as I quit being led by the Spirit, I fall back under the, the do's, amen, and the don'ts. And I can never measure up, and then I feel condemned, and I start to withdraw from God, and I start to pull back, and I start to try to work harder in the flesh, mm -hmm. amen. I start to push farther trying to get back to a place that the flesh can't never go. Where the Spirit lives and breathes mm. and enjoys. Ah, let's check this out now. There is no condemnation to those that are in Jesus Christ. Oh, it says Christ Jesus, I'm sorry. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do. Amen. We don't want to get back under that. Why? It was weak through the flesh. So God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law, verse 4, I better read that to you, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And it doesn't stop there. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. spirit. Now, now how do I know which one I'm in? Because which one am I walking in? It's not saying that you're either saved or lost here. It's saying which one am I going to walk in? Okay? For they that are after the flesh, they do... Mind. Yes. A, a mind. Amen? Mm -hmm. My mind is on the things of the natural, the things of the flesh. Even when I try to pray... Even when I try to minister, even when I try to do godly things, I'm doing them out of the flesh. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, and it can never please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. The scripture says that. Isn't that powerful? Oh my That's why verse 14 across my page is, oh, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. I don't care if you're women. I don't care if you're men. If you're led yeah. by the Spirit of God, you're a son of God. And if you're not, you're just walking in the flesh. Is that okay? Okay. Right. So, well, verse 8 says, They that are in the flesh can't please God. Ain't you glad you're not? Verse 9 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Well, I don't know if I have it. Well, you, it says, Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ... And, wow. and he's none of his. But it, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And here's another verse we take out of context, but it's a good one. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I really believe God has taken us to a place where we have to rely on the Spirit of God more than we rely on our natural man. Mm -hmm. As I age, I have to count on the Spirit of God within me. I think you have to. Amen. And the good news is, is we've got a supernatural being that's in, empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. Jesus Christ is in us. You've got a you, you've been born again. All the old things are passed away and all, all things are become new, but they're not out here because I've got age marks I used to didn't have and my hands look older than they used to look. And I look sometimes in the mirror and I've got my grandpa's arms. Mm. Huh? Uh -oh. His elbows. And you get to looking and the outward man is not getting renewed every day, but the inward man is and I've got to learn to tap in. Huh? To the one that can think clearly, if all, if you know, the one, if you know, if you, if you got this forgetfulness that runs in your family that they now call a disease. Yes. If you got Alzheimer's that runs in your family, you got the mind of Christ. You've got access to everything the Holy Spirit has ever taught you because the part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to bring remembrance. Everything he's taught right. us. Right. Well, you know what I mean? So we're, we're going to have to start to tap in. Not to, boy, i got such a great memory. The older we get, the more notes we take. <laughs> Amen. We used to write something down because it's really good. Now we write something down so we can just remember to get it on to go to the grocery store and come back with it, you know. Maybe make it out of the house with it. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it don't. But I want you to know that we have access to an inner strength. When our physical body's not cooperating. I was sick all night. Did good to get here. And, and, and now I'm actually able to think. But that's God. Praise now see, but you have to tap into what's on the inside. It did fine all night. But now the outward man, he's, he's tired and he's wore out. And he says, the, you know it's just an attack of the devil. going to try to attack you on this right before you go minister somewhere. And, but it's a constant battle. But if we fight the devil in the flesh, we're going to lose. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If sure. we fight him in the flesh, sometimes people make empty confessions of faith. We say the right thing, but they're as empty, as empty, as empty. The man on TV said to say it. I used to say it. Somebody else says it. It says in this book to say it, but you know when I say it, it's coming out just as empty. Hmm. What's happening? I'm, I'm making confessions of faith from the flesh and not from the Spirit. Hmm. One time, you know, the Lord stopped me when I was confessing the Word of God. He said, quit making fearful confessions of faith. I was saying all the right things because I was afraid. Not because I had faith. Jesus. See, we can say the right thing, but I'm really saying my God supplies all my needs because I'm afraid I'm going to lose yes. my business. I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough money. And sometimes I need to check myself. And if I don't feel faith in it, I need to go and get some faith in me. Huh? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I need to get some faith in me so that when I speak it's not an empty confession because the devil's not afraid of an unloaded gun. Amen? He's not afraid of my fearful confessions. Oh, I hope I don't catch Ebola so I'm going to start praying, I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed by... Huh? Now, if I'll read the scripture and let, and let the Spirit, oh, praise God, let the Spirit guide me as I'm reading this and not me just go hunting that favorite verse out of the flesh. Uh, and I'll let the Spirit guide me. He may guide me to a verse I've never thought nothing about having anything to do with healing. And then His Spirit, when He guides me, now I'm being led of the Spirit even as I read the Bible. Even as I, even as I, even as I, I know the answer to that. It's by His stripes I'm healed. It's in Second Peter, and it's in everybody. Mm -hmm. I know, but now, but if I be led by the Spirit, and He gives me the right weapon to use at this moment, I'm going to look like I'm full of faith because I'm being led by the Spirit. Amen. So we make a mistake of being led awesome. by the Spirit in things we don't know and being led by our experience in things we do. I know how to do this. I've been sick before. I know how to do this. I've been broke before. I know how to do this. The child misbehaves, and this is how you respond. But God Almighty will make it work when we start to be led by the Spirit, even in times when the flesh thinks it knows what to do. Mm. 
Because sometimes the flesh know what you should have done last time, but it don't know what you ought to do this time. Amen? And so many times what happens to us is we get the Galatians thing going here. And there's another verse in Galatians, uh, a lot of good ones, like stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free and don't get entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Amen. Well, that sure can happen, can't it? Oh, sure can. oh, amen. We can get free and we can get all bound back up. We can have this here going. Uh, brethren, you've, not, you've been called unto liberty. The word liberty means no law there. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Sounds like a, that's what we said a while ago. You've got to be led by the Spirit or we'll wind up back under the what? The law. Oh, the law. Now look at Galatians, maybe chapter 3. Uh, is it Galatians 3? I think it's Galatians 3. And it says this right here. Whew. The law was our, 24, 324 says, the, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Huh. Whew. But now back over here, I, that's not the verse I wanted, but it sure jumped out when I went across here. Galatians 3 and about verse 3. And it says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the, in the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny that it's easy to pray when God's moving you by His Spirit, and you might pray for three hours. You might pray for 15 minutes, and it might just, the whole world might change. God might, when He just always carrying you, and I mean, it's easy to sing those songs, and it's easy to get up at that time in the morning if He asks you to, or it's easy to go to that hospital. And you know, when the Spirit starts to taper off, and you start to do those same things in the flesh, you know, it's hard to pray. Because you started in the Spirit, and now I'm not continuing in the Spirit. I'm doing spiritual things, but I'm operating the natural. Amen? And there's a place to just do the right thing. You could solve a lot of counseling issues by just telling people, find out what the right thing is and do it. Yes. I don't care how you feel about it, just do the right. Why is it so hard? Just... Do what's right. You'll be fine, but you don't know my case. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, if you'll find out what the right thing is and just do it, don't kill them. Murder is still a sin. Do not. It's not an option. Do not kill them. It's not. Don't put them in the freezer. It's not an option. That was a man on TV that did that. Now, we know the guy that did that's two brothers. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we know them. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus. Uh, yeah, you know, so yeah, it's different when they're just crazy people out there. And these are people you know that this. Oh, Jesus. And, and so, but you know that's the wrong thing to do, don't you? Yes. See, you don't need a special revelation from God to not do that. <laughs> that's right. You would think. You know, you don't need a special one for that. You know, that's just the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. But yet after we get out here walking with God, we get this assumption that we just, that God starts it and He expects us to finish it when He intends us to have a living, breathing, constant communication with the Spirit of God where He moves you to pray. Mm -hmm. huh. and, and he, or He moves you to sing or He moves you to do this or that and that you're not obligated to do it unless He's moving you to do it. And the flesh says, man, this ain't moving fast enough. You need to pray longer. Mm. You, you need to confess more. But it just gets empty because it's no longer being led of the Spirit. It got started in the Spirit. Oh, praise God, I'm telling you. We do them Christmas toys. God started it. Boy, but when we lose track of God, boy, that just turns into some hard work is all it turns into because it is an endless job. <laughs> you got to be led of God. We're going to do it a little different this year because all summer I've heard God say He wants to do it a little different. And so I'm willing to do it a little what? Different. Because I know how hard it was with Him. I sure don't want to do it without Him. Amen. Because this is the way we did it and people are used to how we did it and everybody's excited about doing what we did again. But guess what? You're doing it by yourself. Good luck. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes... See, what happens is they started in the Spirit and then they 
had to try to finish it. All in the flesh. Amen. Mm. He that's begun a good work in you will finish it in the day of Christ Jesus. He'll complete it, but he's going to do it in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. So I got to tap into. Oh. Now, what happens if we don't? If we don't, uh, 310 comes to pass. It says, For as many or as the works of the law are under the curse. And so, so now what the curse is, and this is a simple one word definition, two word definition God gave me. The curse, in a nutshell, is never enough. That's the curse, is never enough. Build a house, you won't live in it. You'll sow the seed, sow, sow a lot of seed, bring none back, but gather very little. All of the curse is basically never enough. And the blessing is always more than enough. Mm. That's really the blessing and really the curse, which says if I walk in the Spirit, there'll always be enough. There'll always be more than enough. But when I start to, huh? When I start to get back over into the natural, see, we say flesh and it makes it so dirty sounding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, when I get, but, but the, we know the natural. When I get back over in the habit of doing things, amen? Mm -hmm then there'll never be enough energy. There'll never be satisfaction. That song will get dead, and you'll say, man, that was such a great song. They must have sinned and lost their anointing, because after all, I don't get much out of that no more when we play it. It's always their fault, when they're... isn't it funny? <laughs> and sometimes that might be true, but I don't know, but I'm telling you, most of the time is, is God was on that song and we started singing it, and two years later we're still singing something, and God's trying to move you on to something else, but that's your song. And you just can't let that go because when you feel that song, you felt God. But now you don't necessarily feel God when they play that song. So there's something wrong with the worship team. There's something wrong with this because after all, you don't. But God's leading you on. Oh, my. Aren't you glad he didn't leave you where he found you? Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you. He's leading us. Goodness and mercy is going to follow us all the days of our life because we're following the good yes. shepherd and the good shepherd. And his sheep hear his voice and the voice of a stranger they don't follow. He doesn't want us under the curse. Ain't you glad you're not yes. under the curse? I'm glad I'm not under the curse. Now, I'm going to go back in Galatians 5 and 6 for just a minute because we're all right here together. Uh, 5.18 says, If you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Then it tells you the law. It tells you what the works of the flesh are. And boy, there's a, quite a few of them there. From adultery to fornication, uncleanliness to lasciviousness, and off to idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and none and none and none. But they just keep going. And it says those that do such things won't inherit the kingdom of God. And sometimes we get in this thing and people say, oh, what does that mean? Well, what is the kingdom of God? The Bible definition of the kingdom of God is the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says about that. That's, right. That's its definition. That's, right. That's the word. I can't be walking in the flesh and have love and joy and peace and right, amen, and righteousness. Huh? People trying to figure out whether or not to, you know, who's going to where and what's going to. I just, well, I read Revelation over there and when it says there ain't no liar going to heaven, I just rejoice. I don't consider myself a liar even though I've not always spoken the truth. I consider myself a child of the truth. When it says this can't go and that can't go, I get excited and I says, I'm going, but it ain't. It ain't following me. It. Yes. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Ain't no sickness either, is there? Ain't no disease either. Ain't no confusion in your mind there, man. I'm going and it can't follow. So y'all can look at things how you want to look at it. I look at it, man, that's a promise. Something's going to have yeah. to happen between here and here. Yes. Amen? Because Amen? Yes. God. Yes. God knows what belongs to him and he knows what don't. Amen. Amen. And I, and that's the neat thing is, that I just love what it says in over in First John. If you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. And when I was a little Christian, I thought confess my sins meant tell Him I'm sorry. As I grown, I found out it means to say the same thing. He says it's a sin. It's I say it's a sin. 
And that's my only argument with people that want to call certain things just lifestyles and choices and born that way and ain't got any... That if I can't call it a sin, I'm calling him a liar. And I ain't going to call God a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. And I tell you what, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm not going to argue with him about it. I'm going to say what he says about it so he can fix me up. Yes. Amen. Amen. If he says I'm walking in the flesh, I'm going to agree with him. I'm walking in the flesh because the only spirit I have access to is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I want to be led of the Spirit, and that way I'm not under the law. Somebody, uh, I was telling somebody about this the other day, and they sent me back and said, I just know the sovereignty of God is so big that, that uh, well, I don't see how with the sovereignty of God you could be under condemnation if you didn't walk in the Spirit. And we get the idea that condemnation is a heavenly thing, and condemnation is an earthly thing. That's right. That's that I put good. myself under condemnation because I know better. Amen. I put myself under condemnation because the law makes it so I can't never do enough. That's the curse is never enough. I can't pray enough. I can't give enough. I can't worship enough. I can't be holy long enough. Well, that's true. I can't, I can't, I can't. And then God's not angry at me. He doesn't. Calls me the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But the condemnation is not coming from God. It's coming from the law. It's coming from the devil. Huh? And it's coming from my friends. And it's coming from my <laughs> church. And it's coming from right in here where it's determining you didn't pray long enough. You didn't do this enough. Amen? That condemnation comes from the enemy. But I'm telling you, we sure help him out. And we confuse. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we can. Boy, I'm telling you, like, Ma, you, you don't get into some condemnation. Let somebody preach to you on what you ought to do and what you're oh, not no. doing. You need, to, you need to do what I do. And you need to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning. You prayed three hours before you got. <laughs> you better be led by the Spirit of God. And that's fine if you are. But when he leads on to something else, you need to move on with him. <laughs> And we get under condemnation because God told me to do this and now I'm stopping so I just I have to keep on going. And it's now dead. When God might rather do something else that's out of your comfort zone. Huh? Like not base your acceptance with Him on based on whether you spent Him three hours or 30 minutes or read that thing. I read the Bible through and through trying to please God. Didn't get much out of it, but I read it. <laughs> Read it through three and a half times before he finally said, Hey, you understand what if thou readeth? No. <laughs> but boy, I'm reading it because... Huh? Don't got no idea. I thought I needed to be circumcised. I'd tell you how much God's good. I done figured out I didn't... I didn't have nobody to help me. I was raised with atheists. And, and, and my mother wasn't an atheist, but she didn't... She, she believed you were supposed to submit to your husband and whatever he said went. If he was an atheist, we was atheist. You know, that's the honest truth. She had that one thing down, you know, that you just don't. Whatever he says, it's black, it's black, it's white, it's white, it's gray, it's gray, you know. Uh, Lynn, uh, I had my son says baby circumcised because I thought you were supposed to. Well, at least you wasn't 13 <laughs> or 14 mean, I, reading the Bible, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm thinking, where in the world am I going to find somebody that gets circumcised? I can't be saved unless I'm circumcised. You read over there in the New Testament? See, I read it from the Old Testament this way. I didn't know. You, I did not know that it wasn't a normal book and it didn't go in chronological <laughs> order. I'd be glad there wasn't no little sheep out there you had to sacrifice. And you finally get over and you find that circumcision is not of the flesh but of the heart. Man, there's some rejoicing going on. Glory, glory. It's not, it wasn't that. Just no, it's, not, it's just a, it was a symbol. Yes. Yeah, in the New Testament, it's done away with praise God. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. It doesn't matter one way or the other. But now notice that if I get back under the law, then... You ever knowed any? Oh, we're going we're gonna to get in trouble, maybe. We try not to get in trouble. <laughs> ever knowed somebody that got so spiritual they went back under the law? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They got so spiritual in God that they went back to keeping Sabbaths and moons and this's and that's. And 
and it has a show of wisdom. Huh? Mm -hmm. And it seems so spiritual, and yet you started in the spirit where you didn't know nothing. You couldn't have told what day anything was. You didn't know what moon meant what and what this and what feast meant that. But you know, you were right with God and He's carrying you on the wings of His spirit. Christ. And then we wind up, we get so spiritual that we wind up back. And I brought that up because I had a good friend that was young and uh, he got real mad at me because uh, he lives out of state and his boss, you know, is sliding into those uh, those things. Uh, man, I love Jewish sounding songs. Man. I, do too. I just love them. I, I love them things. But you know, you can sure slide back under the law. One step by one step by one step, and the next thing you know, you're doing this, and the next thing you're doing that. And uh, he said, you know, it, messianic, which is a great term, nothing against that. Till you start keeping the law for all these things, and then all of a sudden you're keeping the, the dietary law and then the other law and it's one more thing after one more thing and it's never ever ever enough it was never enough for them and I made this statement and I, he said he said you know he's doing this and this and this and the other and I said well God will get him out he got me out He got mad. You don't know him. You're judging him. Oh, boy, oh, boy. You know how these people get to going, you know. No, I've just been there. Done that. Mm -hmm. Well, two years later, he called me up and says, can you believe the man wants me to get circumcised? And I said, I can believe it because that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's never enough. Oh, my Jesus. He wanted to know where that verse was, that circumcision was of the heart. He was interested in what I told him. Now, <laughs> And the man told him, well, you know, we know it's of the heart, but you want to make sure it's done in the flesh just to be sure. Oh, oh bless it. it. Now, see, That's long. what's so bad about that is, see, when we're following the Spirit, we might look crazy, <laughs> but it works. You understand what I'm saying there? What's worse than being led by the Spirit and looking crazy, but it works? is now starting to be led by the flesh and it don't work and all your relatives think you're really nuts now. <laughs> hey. You know what I'm saying now? It's bad enough when you tell them you're going to do this now. You're being led by God to do it. But it works out. But when we start to go the other direction... And we just now caught up with, oh, it's never, ever, ever oh, enough. How do you be led by the Spirit? We're going to come back over to chapter 6 and verse 1. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Notice it says, who can restore somebody? It's the which one? It's the spirit. spiritual. Spirit. That's funny, isn't it? The natural man cannot restore him. Do's and don'ts can't restore him. The only way to restore somebody is to get back in the Spirit. 525 says it this way, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, is that a good word? Yes. It's a good word. It is. And I'm closing, and we're getting ready to pray. And, you know, I, I like to be able to tell you, because my, my question always is, now somebody's going to say, now, how do I do that? And it's so funny, because I can give you ten rules in the flesh of how to walk in the Spirit. I can give you 20 things to do so that you can walk in the Spirit. I can give you 14 more things that you can do so that you can be led of the Spirit. There's people fasting themselves to death that are that started in the spirit and they've moved over into the flesh and it's never enough. Fast 40 days, it's not going to be enough. Give you last penny and it's never going to be enough. Because some woman in the Bible gave her last two mites because she was led by the spirit. Oh, God. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the truth. And the only way to be led by the Spirit, see, it's nothing we can control. Oh, that's good. Thank you, 
So I can't make the Spirit lead me. It's not a switch that I can turn on or turn off. I can't give you seven ways to flip that switch and make the Spirit of God say, do this and do that. What, what, being led by the Spirit is more like having a humble heart and more like having a blank slate and more like not having an agenda. And that's difficult on preachers. And that's difficult on people that's got to have something done on a certain time. Well, what are you going to do? I'll tell you when he tells me. <laughs> we need to plan. God can bless our plan. No, we... God's plan. Amen. And being led by the Spirit is that way. It's that we, we want to tap in to something you've already walked in, something that's not new, but something that's for every day. It's for every moment. I can be led by the Spirit of God on whether to take chemo or not take chemo. I can be led on whether to take an Advil or not. I can be led with whether to eat that or not eat that. On a salad bar, on a food bar. I can be led by God. Huh? And about the only step is to acknowledge, and we say acknowledge, that sounds complicated. No, acknowledge. When I was growing up, uh, things was different in them days, of course, but you can look and see your daddy's eyes, what you're supposed to do or not supposed to do, darn quick. I tell you what, you know, you'd be led. He didn't have to say a word. You could look over there. <laughs> and you know whether to dip or not to dip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying there? And I'm not saying to be afraid of God, but I'm saying you want to look. It's something about looking and saying, now, Lord, does it matter? Does it matter if I eat this or don't eat this? Does it matter if I do that or don't do that? Because God's smart. He may tell you to leave the tuna fish alone today, not because he's against tuna fish and it's going to make you more spiritual, but that tuna fish may be bad today. He may let you eat tuna fish next week. You need to be led. Amen. Amen. And I want to move that out of the way, but I can't. So it's not mine.